here. Today's Bible story is from Proverbs 6, verses 6 and 8. If you could ask for anything you wanted, what would it be that you would ask for? In today's story, we're going to be here about Solomon, and he had that opportunity. Let's take a peek. My name is Erica, and I'm trying to get this metal ball over this bridge, around this magnetic thing, through the metal tubes, around the spiky yellow stuff, through the hoop, around in the maze, and in this orange thing to the very end. But so far, I'm stuck. Not here, not here, not here, not here, not even close to there, not here, not here, not, nope, nope, eh, here. But will I give up? Of course not! <gasps> if at first you don't succeed, try, try, that's what I was taught. It's my responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected. Let's do this. Ah. Okay, now I give up. I tried, I tried again. I still didn't succeed. I don't wanna play this anymore, it's so hard. Ah! I don't wanna do it if it's hard. I'm tired, my head hurts. Ah. I wanna can't be right. I shouldn't quit doing something just because it's hard. I'd never get anything done if I did that. Let's do this! Hold on, hold on! I can do it. Hold on, hold on! Ah! Ah! I made it to the end! And it's all because I whined and complained about how hard it was. Actually, now that I think about it, the whining and complaining didn't really help at all. What did help was something we're learning about in today's story. That's something for you to anticipate. <laughs> the story is about ants, so that's why it's, it's funny. Let's do this. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, Chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. King Solomon was young when he became ruler of Israel after his father David. One night, God spoke to him in a dream. Ask for anything you want me to give you. What? Solomon had just been given the greatest gift of all time. He could have asked for anything. Unlimited money, the power to defeat all of his enemies, or even to be the best loved, longest living king of all time. Instead, though, Solomon made a different ask. Lord, you have now made me king, but I'm only a little child. I don't know how to carry out my duties, so give me a heart that understands. Then I can rule over your people. I can tell the difference between what is right and what is wrong. Solomon asked for wisdom, and God gave it to him. In fact, Solomon became known as the wisest man to ever live. Over the course of his life, he shared many wise sayings that were later recorded in the book of Proverbs. These sayings are to help people do what is just and fair, to help young people learn wisdom. Only fools refuse to listen and learn. The wisdom recorded in Proverbs gives godly advice about nearly everything, from using words wisely to staying away from trouble. But the most famous passages talk about the value of hard work. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. When was the last time you paid attention to an ant, other than the one that you were gonna squash on the kitchen floor? To better understand what Solomon means about work, well, I think it's time we take a closer look. 
Did you know that there are about 1 million ants on Earth for every single human? Yikes! My skin is crawling right now. But just look at how amazing these little guys are. Like Solomon said, nobody lays out a set of rules for them. Nobody offers them an allowance or more screen time if they finish their work. God made them in such an incredible way that they stick with it and get the job done. In fact, some ants can lift up to 50 times their own weight. If you were that strong, you could lift an entire car. And ants use that super strength to store up their food, just like we see in Proverbs. And ants also work smart. They leave a special trail of chemicals, called pheromones, that tells them where they've been so they don't get lost or repeat themselves. And ants are incredibly creative. They actually farm aphids in order to have a constant supply of the honeydew aphids release. And the ants' creativity doesn't stop there. In times of flooding, ants will even protect the queen by forming a lifeboat with their own bodies. Just like Solomon reminds us, ants do whatever it takes to gather up the food they need and to protect their colony. They know how to get the job done, and that's with only about 250,000 brain cells. But you? God made you with 10 million brain cells. He's given you everything you need to work strong, smart, and creatively. And because God has given us so much, there's so much more we can do. In the New Testament, Luke records some of Jesus' words. Much will be required of everyone who has been given much. You are creative and strong. You have a brain that works like no one else's. You are determined. And most of all, you are created in God's image. That means that you can work hard at whatever it takes to show love to God and the people He's made. Sometimes that might look like helping raise funds to provide clean water for kids on the other side of the world. Sometimes that might look like cleaning your room before your mom has to remind you five times. Or working hard to help your little sister to build an epic Lego palace. Whatever your work, remember Solomon's wisdom. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, it has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. Be wise, work hard. God has given you everything you need to follow through. Wow, that was a really good story. It's really nice to know that God has given us everything we need to be able to complete a task. Kind of like how in our memory verse for the month, Luke 16 verse 10, it says, suppose you can be trusted with just a little, then you can also be trusted with a lot. This month, I challenge you to practice responsibility and show that you can do those little tasks so that one day you can also be trusted to do the big things like taking the dog out for a walk or maybe getting on the bus by yourself. Let us know what you are doing to show responsibility. I <laughs> gotcha. Look, I get it. Work is hard, but if we don't work, nothing will ever get done. Think about it. If the ant didn't work, he wouldn't have any food stored up for the winter. We actually need work. Plus, think about Jesus. He gave us an example for how to love people and serve others. And he always did it gladly, working with all his heart. When we work, we should do it with a good attitude. Like we're working for God. We shouldn't whine and complain every time someone asks us to do something that's hard or boring. In fact, we could choose to work hard even before someone asks. Think of work like it's a mission. When your mom or dad tells you to clean your room or something, don't go, it's so hard. Instead say, let's do this and then get the job done. You'll finish your work faster and you'll probably have a better time doing it too. So here's the rule for life to remember today. Work hard when you work. Put your heart into it. It'll feel good to accomplish something. And when you play, you can put your heart into that too. Yes! Mission accomplished! See you next time. <laughs>